And welcome back. And welcome back to In the Works. Today we have something very special for you, and that is the unveiling of our major projects for Blade Show 2019. These are projects that we've been working on off and on for all year, at least since we started the channel. Some things we've made on the channel, some things you haven't seen so much on the channel, but for the most part, it's something that we've put a lot of work into. And today you're gonna finally see some of those pieces at least about 90% of the way completed. Now Blade Show is coming up in about three days we hit the road and drive down to Atlanta. Um, it's just been a hell of a lot of work at least the last month has just been 12 hour days and uh, we kind of warned you guys that there would be a lack of videos. I do apologize that is not something we intended to do but we just had to get things done and that had to be the focus is, is completion and as soon as we get back from Blade it's on for that work. So I mean, we'll, we're gonna have all kinds of great videos for you. Like we mentioned a few videos ago, we'll be working with Kyle Royer and his brother Josh. Um, he's a master smith, an ABS master smith. He's gonna start off with a video showing how he made his blade show project, which is just a very super clean mosaic sword that you guys are definitely gonna dig. He does things a lot different than us. Um, so I think the contrast there of seeing how somebody on the ABS side really does things is gonna be really nice for the channel. We're also gonna start doing full builds. We're gonna do a build with Paul Beasler. Uh, we'll be doing some with him. He's gonna make a hammer for us. There's gonna be some your edges. We're just gonna be all over the place. Well, what's our table number at Blade? Our table number at Blade is table 41A. So make sure you stop by, whether you wanna buy something or not, come check us out. Say hello, we'd love to talk to you. We'll sign some stuff if that's what you're into. But we uh, we have a whole range of products um, from we have hammers. Some hammers, hammers uh, about 125 bucks for a hammer, some stabilized wood if you're a maker, not just for knife handles, you can use that stuff for anything. And then uh, we work all the way up until the major project that Illy's been working on. And I think that's the way where we should start. And that is his hand and a half or two-handed sword that he's been working on. You've seen him carve uh, in two of the carving videos. He carved the dragon. And why don't you go ahead and tell them about yourself? So uh, you saw me carve out the dragon uh, for you. I finished it. Uh, you can follow my Instagram. I keep <clears throat> relatively regular updates on that. Uh, the angel side has a diamond set in here. I refined the dove. Uh, now, what I had to do, I had to take fine silver, make a pipe and chase it, and then uh, set rubies in the sides, right here. Uh, the pommel has an amethyst stone and gold inlay. The guard is gold inlay. Now, uh, this sword is a little bit on the heavy side. The reason is it has about one pound of silver, maybe a little bit more on it because this tubing right here that I had to make is about eight ounces and plus soldered on pieces and this termination here brings it about two on pound. Right. Uh, this is also my first wire wrap see that handle that I did. Oh, yeah. So I think I completed the theme relatively well uh, with the theme of cathedral architecture and the Inquisition. So Please check this sword out. The only thing you have to make on it now is a stand. Oof. Yeah, we'll uh, make some nice stands. But Why don't you, uh, I mean, one of the cool things that I love about this is every piece on it. It's either silver, gold, or Damascus, basically. It's yes. some copper in the handle, but. Yeah. Uh, the blade, well, I never really looked down the blade. It looks awesome. So this is ladder patterned. What tell us about the blade? So uh, the blade is Damascus. I made uh, three billets. Two billets are regular, 1095 and 15 and 20. Those are my size here and here. In between, a la San Mai style, I inserted a third billet, which is Hitachi blue, uh, 80 CRV and 15 and 20. So the cutting function of the blade is performed by steels that are much harder and much better designed for cutting performance. Although the shape of this blade is also very very well designed for thrusting because the, of the long ricasso right here. 
like that. Uh, however, this is primarily this is not a combat piece because of the amount of work in it. It's primarily a concept art piece that I'm submitting for Blade uh, competition. So let's see who wins. Yeah, I mean, he's being a little modest. By far, this is the nicest sword I've ever been in the presence of, especially a modern made one. It has so much work to it. Every detail, there's n there's nothing plain about it. Basically, every every little flat surface has carving, or gold, or silver, or both. Yeah, uh, because I'm not using any modern methods in um, creating the garniture for the sword, it's actually fairly easy for me uh, to create an, a fake uh, of a museum piece because all the tool marks will be identical since I'm using the same tools. So what I had to do is keep in my mind not make a reproduction of an existing piece, but rather make something that is has all the stylistic elements of a medieval piece. However, they would be assembled in a way that is obviously modern, a modern concept piece of art. Uh, otherwise, I would feel relatively bad if I reproduce something that is close to museum quality, someone buys it, and then uh, 60 years down the line it shows up at a stupid auction and I'm yeah. not there to say anything. Now, I did not sign this piece and it's already assembled, so it's been, cannot take it apart. However, I'm not a master smith, so there's no need for me to sign I'm anything. I'm pretty sure your signature is all over it. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Um, it, it is truly awesome. It's there's there's very few things that I term use the term relic on. This is, this is something that's just this would be the ultimate hero sword or whatever you want to call it. I I just went on a uh, European trip a couple years ago. And I went to several castles, and almost every castle had like their main piece like hanging as you walk in above the stairwell or something, and none of them were even close to this nice. So this yeah. is this is pretty awesome, and will basically cost you the price tag of a Honda Civic. <laughs> it's a nice Honda Civic. All right, let's talk about my next piece. Uh, this is a main style gladius it has a hollow ground blade uh, it doesn't look like a whole lot now uh, because it's not etched I hand sanded this blade all the way up to 2500 um, but it is completely mosaic Damascus uh, you've seen me make several of the billets that are in this uh, on the show itself the guard is one of the billets sliced um, so it has mosaic pattern as well. Basically the wood furniture I, I pretty much did in one day last Saturday. That's nothing to be proud of. Yeah, I mean these projects you don't want to rush but I've been in a rush so it is what it is. Uh, silver wire twisted in the handle, silver plates. I still have to make a Damascus uh, termination, basically a nut for the top of this to complete this. But I did save uh, the etching for you guys. We're gonna do that here in just a few minutes. So we'll be able to see the pattern that is in this blade. I'm really proud of this as far as the blade goes. Um, most knife makers and sword makers hand sand every project that they do. Um, I really never have. I've hand sanded some fullers out like on Man at Arms Art of War. I hand sanded the saber fullers and things like that. But I've never done that much hand sanding, so uh, yeah, this is this is my main project, and I'm I'm pretty happy with it. There's always room to improve, but uh, I think sitting on the table, people will definitely get an idea of what we're capable of. Uh, I wish I had more time, but pretty much everyone at Ape time is the most expensive resource. Yeah, everyone at Bleed Show is is probably gonna say you know they wish they had a little more time, but. Definitely proud of this. Basically, the last month I've stayed here or worked at home after 3 o'clock, so I've put in 12 hour days, like I said. And this is my main thing I had to show for it. The other thing, let's pull this back, is something that I made most of the way on the channel. Where's my little. <laughs> what do you lose? Why not? 
So this I'm basically calling the 100,000 sub dagger. So I forged the blade on camera for you guys in the 100,000 100, sub episode where I did some interviews and different things and talked about different stuff. So this is the, the edge wrap that I forged. I ground it off camera, heat treated off camera. But also the bone handle carving I did on camera for you guys. Uh, that was our first kind of maker style thing where we got the idea to some do some engraving with Ilya. So this has a lot of meaning for me for the channel. It's kind of my first piece that we've done on camera. Um, once again, this is mosaic Damascus explosion pattern twisted, wrapped around another mosaic core which got really skinny. So it's really kind of hard to see, but I see it. Yeah, you see it in places. It actually got really random because of how much I squished it. So I, I really like it. It's very different than most mosaics. Also a mosaic guard that I grounded with a narrow wheel and sculpted up. A uh, desert iron wood, I believe. I don't know, this was a random piece of wood that I really like the color of for the bollocks, if, if you will. If it smells funny, it's desert iron wood. Yeah, <laughs> it does smell a little funny. Another mosaic uh, Damascus piece for the end cap, and then I have a little nut. Um, one, one of the cool things that happened with this piece is you can see all the way through the carving. So I did file work on the tang. I think that really brought out a lot of it, and then Ilya suggested that I etch the tang, which I never really planned on doing, but you can see through and see the Damascus that it's all the way through. So I really like this piece. It's not going to be for everybody. Some people don't like Bollock Daggers. Personally, I do. I think they're cool. Um, they have a lot of history. And this is not a direct copy of an original, but it's certainly highly inspired by one. I doubt that the original is hollow ground, but once again, I kind of wanted to show off a little bit. And I think it's, it's very crisp and nice. Um, definitely want to improve all my carving skills, but uh, yeah. It's just time. Just it's pretty good. I like it. It feels really good in the hand. Blades light. Good balance. So definitely come by and check this one out. Um, once again, any of these pieces that don't sell at Blade Show, and we hope that we sell them all, but realistically that usually never happens, will be available um, at thatworks.shop. That's our website for the channel. So these will go up for sale. You guys will have an opportunity. If you have an opportunity to come to Blade Show and buy them as well, um, this one you know, any of the pieces that we've made on the show will always go up there in the future for sale uh, unless we're doing something for an actual customer. <laughs> we had a pretty crazy roadblock actually last week where we had, I can't really talk about it, but we had a high-end uh, client come in and ask us to do a build for them um, and, and do that on camera. So we banged out a build for a high-end client and, uh, you know, that meant slowing us down on all these projects. But it is what it is. That's kind of the life you live when you get the reputation that we have. Uh, what else do we got? Here, put uh, this back. Oh, I have a little knife here. It should be done gluing up. Hopefully it doesn't spring. Did it? No, that was a piece of oh, Come on, dude. Like, these things are not as durable as you think I don't care. So this is a mosaic knife kind of it's somewhat modern but very kind of medieval style-esque um, I just did a fluted handles four flutes four four fat flutes and four skinny flutes so eight flutes uh, wrought iron guard that was made from a wagon wheel um, then I highly etched it it's actually pretty yes. pretty crappy wrought to be perfectly honest um, silver spacer in between the guard and the handle the mosaic blade um, was never supposed to really work. <laughs> you see me make some of those billets um, when I was doing my diamond section forge weld. I had little leftover pieces of all those little billets. And I just stacked them up and kept welding them, welding them. And I only had little pieces to work with. I never really expected it to work. But I did everything right and it worked. And I got a little blade out of it and I'm very happy. Um, I say little, it's because I make swords. You guys probably don't think it's that little. But uh, 
it's actually a pretty nice knife. I'm happy with it. It's definitely some some areas uh, of improvement, if you will, moving forward on stuff. I learned a lot, um, but this kind of gave me the confidence to do more and more, more, blah, 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 more and more mosaics. So you're gonna see more of that from me in the future for sure. And yeah, come by, buy this. I'll sell it to you at a really good price. <laughs> but I like it. This is a piece of the stabilized wood that we have from Russia that we'll be selling. It's just really nice stuff. They got the guy who makes these has great color, good eye for picking the wood. And it's honestly, it's not really the visual thing why we buy that. We've had trouble with stabilized wood in the past, just not being stable. And um, yeah. <laughs> And well, this so, sometimes when you buy stabilized wood, um, the there's not enough filler, so the wood does not hold a polish. Yeah. Uh, and I've selected a guy, and he just does great work. So it holds a polish, it carves nice. It's just it's good. Yeah. So I'm I'm super happy. That's the bulk of our projects. We have, like I said, we have some other smaller stuff, some kitchen knives, uh, some hammers. You can come buy some stabilized wood for projects. Oh, and the dragon katana too. I and didn't the dragon bring... katana that you've seen him do a talk on. Um, so that'll be there for sale. We're going to basically be there to hang out, have a great time. We hope you guys consider coming down to Blade Show. The very last thing that we have to do in this video is to etch my Gladius. So let's go ahead and uh, degrease it and do it. <laughs> All right. Just let that sit in there in the ferric chloride for about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, till I get my desired depth. There's plenty of contrast there, and then I'll be able to put this together. Thanks for watching this episode. We'll be back right after Blade Show with lots of great episodes. Like I said, Kyle Royer's gonna be added to the team. Kyle Royer, sorry. Paul Beasler's gonna be making some stuff with us, and we're gonna be making some full builds like you guys have asked for, and we'll still be doing our In The Works vlogs as well as Your Edge. Thanks for watching. Stop by Table 41A at Blade Show, where we'll see you next week. Peace.